everyone who is watching me live namaskar welcome to national webinar on real learning shakespeare which is a very suitable topic of the day at the outset let me thank honorable shri vijay jadhav sir the president padma shri anna saheb jadhav bhartiya samaj unnati mandal bhivandi equally honorable shri bal krishna kale sir executive president padma shri anna saheb jadhav bhartiya samaj unnati mandal bhivandi respected dr ashok var principal bnn college and my dear friend dr sudhir nikam sir for giving me the platform and the opportunity thank you so much thank you all for watching me live dear friends today we are going to focus upon shakespeare in tragedy shakespeare is a very name book in which the main character is brought to ruin or suffers extreme sorrow especially as a consequence of tragic flaw moral weakness or inability to cope up with unfavorable circumstances here we must focus upon these words say for example tragic flaw moral weakness or inability to cope up with unfavorable circumstances what happened in greek tragedy that everything was predecided shakespeare has made some changes in greek tragedy the fate used to decide everything for the person for the main character in other words if i say the way was prepared before the even the birth of the hero and the poor fellow was supposed to walk on the path which was already prepared by the destiny by the luck but shakespeare made a small change what did he do he made character fall the victim of the circumstances in other words that some moral weakness some tragic flaw that is hamarshia takes place and for that we cannot blame the destiny and that is why it is correctly said character is destiny so far as shakespeare's plays are concerned so it is tragic flaw moral weakness or inability to cope up with unfavorable circumstances the second definition is tragedy is a type of drama that presents a serious subject see serious subject here the word serious is very important the subject taken up is serious say for example hamlet macbeth king lear all these plays talk about serious subjects but about a human suffering and corresponding terrible events in a dignified manner the manner in which the play takes place is dignified it's not an ordinary story it is an extraordinary story of an extraordinary person say for example king hamlet again uh, uh, macbeth then uh, julius caesar they are emperors they are kings they are queens they are princes and princesses so they are dealt with in a dignified manner and as we have discussed earlier aristotle says it is an imitation that is mimesis of an action that is serious complete and of certain magnitude the second part of the definition is equally important he says through pity and fear affecting the proper purgation purgation should take place of purgation of these emotions pity and fear we feel pity for hamlet we feel pity for uh, julius caesar we feel pity for othello and it creates a kind of fear among the people that if the things can happen with such great people they can happen with us right so these two words are very important so in short now we have understood the exact meaning of the term tragedy now let us try to understand nine major characteristics of shakespearean tragedy see there are so many characteristics but the characteristics that i have chosen here are the most important characteristics let us study them one by one here you have elements and explanation afterwards we shall understand these elements these characteristics in detail say the first element is the tragic hero he is the main character he is cursed by fate and possessed of a tragic flaw so both the things play equal role tragic flaw is there 
and to some extent fate or uh, destiny or the stars of the person play an important role the second is the struggle between good and evil satya asatya dharma adharma and the this struggle can take place as part of the plot or exist within the main character so it is always the struggle between good and evil and later on we shall study who wins at the end poetic justice will come afterwards right now let us focus upon hamarshia it is a fatal character the fatal character flow of the tragic hero the good being destroyed along with the bad at the res uh, resolution of the play often play that is the tragic west that is again the good guy character and specially of good guy character so hamarshia is the fatal character of a uh, fatal flaw of the tragic hero then comes external conflict see if there is no conflict no play can go forward what i mean to say is you must have studied the dramatic design or pyramidal structure of the play that is uh, in in the beginning we have exposition then we have rising action then we have climax then we have falling action then we have denouement or the end all these things can take place only if there is some conflict conflict can be divided into two parts that is internal conflict and external conflict we shall study these two conflicts in detail afterwards the next is catharsis the release of the audience emotions through empathy with the characters that is called catharsis supernatural elements are very common so far as shakespeare's tragedies are concerned the audience in the 16th century i don't know they they must have enjoyed all these things even today many people enjoy horror movies and uh, serials depicting the witches and ghosts and witchcraft so supernatural elements are always there lack of poetic justice as i talked little earlier poetic justice means good should be rewarded and evil should be punished but in in the place of shakespeare we do not have complete poetic justice it is called partial poetic justice the meaning is that uh, oh, iago is punished but at the same time othello also suffers he also dies innocent desdemona she also loses life right so that is called poetic justice and comic relief one more one or more humorous characters who participate in scenes intended to lighten the mood sometimes uh, quite a few incidents are added to heighten the the level of tragic flow and that is called comic relief now study the characteristics one by one in detail the tragic hero say for example this is uh, perhaps the most significant element of a shakespearean tragedy because uh, a hero is the person who has something heroic in him say the uh, take the example of uh, macbeth or king lear or julius caesar or antony and cleopatra both of them are noble people then we have so many other heroes one of the most significant elements of a shakespearean tragedy he or she must suffer because of some flow of character there is tragic flow and for that we cannot blame the destiny we cannot blame his stars because of inevitable fate or both sometimes the fate and the flow of the character both of them play equal role uh, when we talk about shakespeare and the shakespearean tragedy we need to recall andrew cecil bradley popularly known as ac bradley he says shakespearean tragedy is essentially a tale of suffering and calamity conducting to death usually the hero has to face death in the end in most cases the hero dies at the end of the story at the end of the play when the hero dies it is not the death of just one person it is the death of so many people it is the suffering of so many people i'll give you an example of a big building multi storied building when the building falls down it is not the end of one building it affects so many other buildings surrounded by that one so if a big tree falls down it would harm so many other things and other people so the tragic hero is 
a towering personality, very important person. And for that, we need to remember that he is not an ordinary person, he is an elite person. An important feature of the tragic hero is that he or she is a towering personality in his or her state, kingdom or country. This person hails from the elite stratum of society and holds a high position, often one of the loyalty. Tragic heroes are kings, princes or military generals. Say for example, Othello is a military general. King Lear is a king. Hamlet is the prince of Denmark, who are very important to their subjects. Take Hamlet, the prince of Denmark. He was the student of the Wittenberg University. Most of you know that. The hero is such an important person that his death gives rise to full-scale turmoil, disturbance in chaos throughout the land. When Hamlet takes revenge for the death of his father, he is not only killing his uncle but inviting his own death at the hands of Leatis. And as a direct result of his death, the army of Potimpras enters Denmark to take the control. So, tragic hero is the most important and that is why it is number one. Tragic hero is the most important uh, characteristic of the uh, Shakespearean tragedy. A towering personality, as I said you earlier, in his or her state, kingdom, they are kings, princes, military generals and uh, these are the qualities. The second important characteristic of a Shakespearean tragedy is, it is a struggle, it is a fight between the good and the evil. According to Edward Dodden, tragedy as conceived by Shakespeare is concerned with the ruin of restoration of the soul and of the life of men. In other words, being very simple, he says, it is subject, its subject is the struggle of good and evil in the world. Say for example, Iago represents the evil and Othello represents the good. It is the fight, it is the clash between the good and the evil and ultimately the evil is punished but sadly saying good is not rewarded. Goodness never beats evil in the tragedies of Shakespeare. Evil conquers goodness at the end of the tragedy. The reason for this is that why Shakespeare did so? The question that comes to every thinking mind is that that good should win and evil must be punished. That must be the judgment. But Shakespeare did not follow that. There is no full poetic justice or complete poetic justice in the plays of Shakespeare. Then the reason for this is that the evil element is always disguised. They are never open. On the contrary, goodness is open and freely visible to all. So it can be easily targeted. Goodness can be targeted easily. For example, Iago says at one place, I am not what I am. He is hidden. Honest Iago, everybody trusts him, including uh, Othello, including Desdemona, everybody trusts him, but he is not what he is. So, goodness is open and freely visible to all, but on the contrary, evil element is always disguised and this is the reason why there is no poetic justice. The main character, the most pious and honest person, honest uh, king, honest prince, on his military general is assigned the task of defeating the supreme evil because of his goodness. As a result, he suffers terribly and ultimately fails due to his fatal flaw. As I told you earlier, he terribly suffers and ultimately fails due to his fatal flaw. Fatal flaw plays an important role. Each one has at least one weakness and that weakness brings the doom, that weakness brings the destruction. He suffers, he dies, he bleeds, he struggles because of that flow. Say for example, Othello, when Iago talks about Desdemona and Othello believes him, so he is credulous, he believes whatever Iago says and that is his fatal flow. Macbeth, King Lear, King Lear says one fine morning, he calls upon all his three daughters and says, who loves me the most? See, so that is his fatal flow. So all the heroes have fatal flows and these flows bring him the death and destruction. The third one is Hamartia. In fact, Hamartia is not an English word. It is a Greek word 
and the meaning in English is sin or error. Hamar shay is sin or error. And we also call it tragic flow. As we talked little earlier, tragic flow, it refers to the hero's tragic flow. Every hero falls due to some flow in his or her character. Simply speaking, Hamar shay is nothing but the flow in the character that brings his doom, that bring his destruction, that brings disaster in his life. So, here we cannot blame the destiny, we cannot blame the fate because the character is destiny. The simple meaning is character himself creates his own destiny. As if Bradley once upon, I would like to quote him, who says, the calamities and catastrophe follow inevitably from the deeds of men and the main source of these deeds is character. See, I will read it again to make it clear. The calamities and catastrophe follow inevitably. The word inevitably is very important here. From the deeds of men, not by the destiny, not by the fate. It is by the deeds of men, that is the main character, in the main source of these deeds is character. So, character creates his own destiny. As we say in English, man is the architect of his own life. In the same way, the deeds of man in the main source of these deeds is character. I think it is clear to you. As a result of that fatal flow, what happens? The hero falls from a high position. Hero is not an ordinary person because if something happens to an ordinary man, it will not be taken care of. People would just neglect if a beggar dies, right? It won't be the headline of the newspaper. But if something happens to the, uh, the president or the prime minister or the minister, higher the status, greater the fall. It is correctly said in English. If an ordinary person dies, it will not be taken note of. But if something happens to a very important person, elite person, then it would create some some kind of movement in the society. So, as a result of the fatal flow, the hero falls from a high position. I would give one example. If you fall down from a, a building of 10 feet high, what would happen? People won't die generally when they fall from 10 feet high wall. But if the same person falls from three-story building, then it would bring more injuries. In the same way, hero is a tall building. He is a towering personality. He belongs to an elite class. That is why as a result of the fatal flow, the hero falls from a high position. He is not an ordinary person. He for higher the status, greater the fall, which usually leads to his or her unavoidable death. The death is unavoidable and that position plays a very important role. The position, the fatal flow, all these things play very important role and that is called hamartia. Hamartia, let me tell you again, is nothing but the flow in the character and that flow is responsible for the downfall of the main character. The next is again very important friends, tragic west. What do we mean by tragic west? The first is the hero usually dies along with his opponent opponent that is the villain or the opposite person, the hero usually dies along with his opponent, hero dies at the same time, the opponent also dies. Say for example, take the case of any play you like, it is not an ordinary death. As I told you earlier, the death is not the death of an ordinary person. It is not the story of a common man, it is not the story of a layman. It is a story of the king, it is a story of the uh, prince, it is a story of the military general. So, it is not the death of an ordinary man. It encompasses the loss of an exceptionally intellectual, honest, intelligent, noble and virtuous person. And that is why, remember, I had talked about pity and fear. The, the feeling of pity is aroused because the person is not a bad person. Say for example, if a very good person, 100% good person dies, it won't arouse the elements of pity and fear. Why? Because the first thing is that there cannot
anyone on earth who is 100% good at the same time his death would shock us his death or death of a good person 100% good person will not arouse the feelings of pity and fear at the same time if the person is 100% bad again this is not possible on earth if the 100% bad person dies it would relax us that's great he has passed away he has died so the hero should be all good with one weakness that is one fatal flaw so he is intellectual honest intelligent noble and he is a bundle of all that is good on earth but unfortunately that hamartia that tragic flow that weakness brings his doom when good is destroyed along with the evil the loss is known as a tragic waste what do we mean by tragic waste when the good is destroyed along with evil evil goes away evil is punished we are happy that evil is punished iago is duly punished we are happy but the death of desdemona the death of othello the suffering of so many other people emilia say for example then that is called the tragic west it is not the death of one person it is not the death of uh, one character it is the tragedy of so many people it is the suffering of so many people so tragic west is that concept shakespearean tragedy always includes tragic west of goodness and it is the goodness that suffers and that suffering creates the feeling of pity among the spectators among the readers among the students and readers hamlet is a perfect example of west even though hamlet succeeds in uprooting the evil from denmark he does so at the cost of his own death in this case the good that is hamlet gets destroyed along with the evil Claudius Claudius his uncle neither of them wins instead they fail together Claudius dies but unfortunately Hamlet such an intelligent person the student of Wittenberg university young person who has not seen life properly he also dies he is killed and that creates the feeling of pity instead they fail together Iago is punished but at the same time uh, othello also dies desdemona also loses her life the next topic is conflict as i told you in, in 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 the beginning of my lecture that it is the conflict that gives birth to the rising action if you take away conflict from the play it doesn't remain a play because it is all about conflict and uh, there, if there is no conflict there cannot be rising action in other words if i say that if you uh, take away the fragrance from the flower it is of no use it has its own beauty but the fragrance matters the most so conflict can be divided into two categories external conflict which can be seen and internal conflict the conflict going on within the person which cannot be seen for example when uh, hamlet wanted to take revenge the internal conflict played an important role so what is external conflict it plays a vital role it causes internal conflict in the mind of the hero external conflict leads to internal conflict hamlet for example is i have taken the examples of hamlet othello king lear and julius caesar because these plays are very well known to most of the people hamlet for example is confronted with external conflict in the shape of his claudius he has to take revenge because uh, the ghost of his father had told him that the real uh, murderer or the real killer is not that snake that is beaten him but he is uncle but his uncle was very uh, very clever and uh, shrewd and hamlet is not able to translate his ideas into action this external conflict gives rise to internal conflict which hinders hamlet from taking any action hamlet delays he wanted to kill his uncle but he could not do the things in time he delayed because of that conflict 
Now let us come to the internal conflict. As I told you earlier, see before I go to internal conflict, let me tell you something more about external conflict. External conflict can be of three types: conflict between men and men, conflict between men and society, and the conflict between men and nature. Right. So external conflict can be of three types. Let us go to internal conflict. the most essential element in the plays of shakespeare in almost all the plays of shakespeare and especially uh, in that shakespearean tragedies it refers to the confusion in the mind of the hero to be or not to be very famous line you no know? what to do to do or not to do to be or not to be that big question mark that takes place in the mind of the shen to can that's why he says that famous line uh, put out the light and then put out the light if i quench thy rose i cannot give it vital growth again i shall smell thee on the tree you know so he is divided hamlet is a perfect example he is usually doer but over the course of the play his indecision and frequent philosophical hang ups create a barrier to action what i mean to say is that internal conflict is more dangerous more fatal compared to the external conflict because when you have something external you can treat say for example you have some injury external injury that can be treated easily but internal injury can not be treated easily the same thing no external conflict is curable it's all right but the internal conflict it's up the hero from inside and that is very important so far as shakespearean tragedies are concerned the sixth one is the catharsis very important catharsis along it's not an english word it's a greek word most of the words in english are greek it is a remarkable feature of a shakespearean tragedy it refers to the cleansing of the audience pent up emotions no it is purgation of the emotions it is the purification of the emotions so catharsis is purification or the purgation because if emotions are not properly purgated it would damage the personality of a person the mindset of the audience the mindset of the readers and that is why there must be catharsis at the end of the play right so this is it is the sixth uh, element sixth characteristic but i think that it is equally important uh, so catharsis plays an important role shakespearean tragedies help the audience to feel and release emotions through the aid of tragedy so the tragedy is an aid it helps us to release the emotions and once the emotions are released we feel happy say for example sometimes what happens that after weeping we feel relaxed right some some people they, they say that let him weep let him shed tears once the tears are shed we feel all right we feel fine so catharsis is very important when we watch it happens when we go to the theater we spend a lot of money and we start weeping we start shedding the question is do we spend money to weep do we spend money to shed tears and the answer is catharsis yes sometimes people spend money people go to the theater they watch a tragedy they weep they shed tears and that makes the person a better human being because of catharsis the purgation the purification the person is purified when we watch a tragedy we identify with the characters and take their losses personally for example when desdemona dies it it gives a kind of feel you know to a desdemona such an honest wife such an innocent person she has passed away she has died without having any fault on her part see the beauty of the play is that without having any fault on her part the only fault if you call it a fault at all the only fault on the part of desdemona was that she was honest she was sincere she was innocent do you call all these things her mistakes not at all but in the shoot world sometimes to be honest is a dangerous thing so she suffers 
we identify with the characters and take their losses personally people started weeping when othello had killed desdemona people started weeping when hamlet died what is that that is catharsis a shakespearean tragedy gives us an opportunity to feel pity for a certain character when an innocent person dies we feel pity for that particular character and fear for another almost as if we are playing the roles ourselves it is called the identification of the self with the people playing their roles on the stage so we laugh with them we weep with them we feel happy with them we feel sad with them so it is the identification of the roles the villain's cruel deeds curse us to feel wrath towards him we are very unhappy with the villain and when somebody beats the villain we always feel happy tears flow freely when a hero like hamlet dies why do we feel unhappy why do we weep when such a person dies because we identify ourselves with the hero at the same time we feel both sorry for hamlet and happy that claudius has received his proper punishment evil is punished so we feel happy and we feel sorry for hamlet macbeth king lear julius caesar romeo and juliet antony and cleopatra we feel sorry for them because innocent people good people are no more they suffer but at the same time we feel happy that iago is punished right that that most of the bad people are duly punished and that is why we feel happy and that is we call catharsis yes supernatural elements is the seventh important characteristic of a shakespearean tragedy as i told you earlier in the 16th century and even today many people believe in ghosts and demons and witches and we see all of them on the screen or on the stage it gives a different type of feeling to the people and that is why see shakespeare was a very forward the plot of the play a step forward the ghost of hamlet's plays hamlet plays an important role in stirring up internal conflict see in the beginning of the play hamlet you see that hamlet's father's ghost is introduced the play opens the curtain rises and we see what we see the ghost of hamlet's father so right from the very beginning it it grips our mind it grips our attention that something is going to take place because hamlet's father's father has died and he is seen as the ghost it is the ghost who tells hamlet his father was killed by his uncle otherwise no people thought that he was bitten by a poisonous snake and he died but the ghost comes out ghost appears and he tells everything to his own son and he also uh, advises his son to take revenge upon the the snake that is on the throne of denmark so he says Claudius and assigns him the duty of taking revenge. So right from very beginning, we come to know about the play. What is going to happen in the play, right? And that is through the supernatural element. So what I mean to say, supernatural elements are not introduced just to make the the play awful, wonderful, or to frighten the people. They are introduced to to highlight. quite a few things and to bring the play a step forward so far as hamlet is concerned in the beginning of the play we have the ghost and that ghost opens the story that ghost the ghost of hamlet's father introduces the story and we are in a mood to watch the play similarly the which is in the play macbeth plays a significant role in the plot these which is are responsible for motive to resort to murder in order to ascend the throne of scotland so again in macbeth which is play a very important role and they bring the play a step forward so in short a uh, which is and demons and all these uh, supernatural agencies they are introduced with a purpose and the purpose is very clear now dear friends 
the next is absence of poetic justice in the beginning of the play i had, in the beginning of the discussion i had said that poetic justice simply means good is rewarded and evil is punished that is complete poetic justice in shakespeare we do not have complete poetic justice we have partial poetic justice that means that good is not rewarded but yes the evil is ultimately defeated the evil is punished let us have a look at the first uh, point poetic justice means good is rewarded and evil is punished it refers to a situation in which everything comes to a fitting and just end there is no poetic justice or you can call it uh, partial poetic justice in the tragedies of shakespeare rather these plays contain only partial poetic justice no poetic justice simply means that uh, evil is punished good is punished but evil is not punished but here it doesn't happen shakespeare understood that poetic justice rarely occurs outside the fiction everything is all right in the novels in the fiction but in real life good doesn't mean every time bad is not punished every time it is the good that suffers the most it is the bad that rules over the good so shakespeare understood that poetic justice rarely occurs outside of fiction good deeds often go without reward and immoral people are often free to enjoy life to its fullest and shakespeare understood this philosophy of life and he has remained very faithful to the realities of life that in real life good people do not always win and bad people are not always punished so there is poetic justice partial poetic justice in the plays of shakespeare do good and have good was considered an outdated ethos no good do good and have good in our language we say the kar bhala to ho bhala lekin aisa hota nahi hai in the same way in the plays of shakespeare do good and have good was not considered an outdated ethos in the time of shakespeare which is why we don't find any poetic justice in his tragedies and if at all there is some poetic justice we can call it partial poetic justice good is crushed along with the evil hamlet dies along with claudius the ninth in the last is the comic relief comic relief is again a very important aspect because it highlights the the tragic effect of the play if everything is tragic and there is no comic relief it won't highlight so shakespeare the the great writer the great dramatist one of the most important dramatists of the world he could understand the mind of the main he could understand the mind of the theater goers or the spectators and the readers so he introduced comic comic relief say for example his contemporary ben his contemporary christopher marlowe if you study the plays of marlowe you won't find any comic relief there is no comic relief there are no female characters in christopher marlowe but shakespeare he was a entertainer he did not believe in uh, he did not believe in uh, all the technicalities of the play say for example he didn't care for the unity of time place and action he didn't care much for the dramatic design but he cared for the likes and dislike of the people he cared for the audience he is an entertainer so his main duty was to highlight and the tragedy can be highlighted only if the comic relief is introduced so comic relief is our uh, final key element shakespeare didn't follow in the footsteps of his classical predecessors when writing tragedies say for example shakespeare's contemporary ben jonson he called him the soul of the age in the words of in fact uh, ben jonson was a classicist he had created classical comedies and uh, he was a man of everything that falls under the rules and regulations uh, he said that he was the soul of the age and he was not of the one age he was of all ages so shakespeare could understand the minds of the men in the best possible way and this is the reason why he is remembered even today why he is taught not only in england not only in the english speaking countries but he is taught read and enjoyed everywhere where english is understood english is taught shakespeare did not follow 
the footsteps of his classical predecessor that is greek and latin tragedies we are talking about when writing tragedies greek and roman writers did not use comic relief so this is shakespeare's contribution to tragedy because in the classical comedies greek and roman tragedies we don't find anything like comic relief so comic relief is introduced by shakespeare and one more thing i would like to tell you here that he has used blank words in his tragedies and that blank words was invented by his predecessor that is uh, christopher marlow right so marlow died at the age of 29 and some people think that if marlow had lived longer he would have surpassed shakespeare but that is another assumption uh, shakespeare remains indebted to marlow for the use of blank words and this is shakespeare's own contribution to tragedy that is the comic relief but shakespeare wanted to relieve the tension for the reader and lighten up the mood here and there and that is why he has introduced comic relief a few examples of comic relief scenes include the grave digger scene in hamlet if you read the grave digger scene in hamlet you will come to know that comic relief plays an important role it relieves the tension for the reader for a time being so that when the tragic scene is introduced once again it can have the extraordinary height and that is the reason why comic relief is there in all the tragedies of shakespeare say for example uh, macbeth hamlet in hamlet we have great digger scene and that scene creates some smile on the faces of the spectators uh, when we talk about macbeth the drunken poet scene if you remember the drunkard poet scene in macbeth the fool is smarter than the king dialogue in king lear and the polonius in the wings of speech in hamlet so here macbeth king lear hamlet all these plays include the comic relief and comic relief bring some freshness on the faces of the spectators on the faces of the readers on the faces of the audience and that is why this is the last uh, thing now i would like to thank everybody who have watched me live if you have any queries if you have any questions you can just send me on my email id it is eroswaja79 at the rate gmail.com thank you so much for watching me live thank you once again namaskar bharat mata ki jai vande mataram we all the critics or we all the students or the teachers we are very much having a liking on tragedy and when you come back to the shakespearean tragedy we just we just give a word like wow it's a shakespearean tragedy somehow or as the time passes we actually rejecting or probably we are uh, neglecting the comedy this comedy as we think 
people who are the worse than the average worse word actually is here we need to understand worse means what worse means a kind of a ridiculous man who is uh, who is doing some fault who is doing some some uh, you know uh, the some sense of comedy will be kind of a, a tragedy so that that comedy that that play no longer remain as a as a comedy so in the old comedies these were very much abundant the satire was very much there you can find a humorous situation but you cannot find but you cannot find the the the, the total you know uh, the total form of a form of a uh, you know form of a humor or form of a comedy in the in the old comedy but when you come back to you know what do you mean by the comic violence now what it is now in a comedy and i'm talking about the comic violence what do you mean by violence now the violence is totally missing in the comedy it's very much there in the tragedy this is well known fact but when and you know, there is no blood said there in in the, the comedy but in the comedy the violence will be, is is there if you satirize someone in a very harsh way in a very crude way so that the person will be hurt what is the objective of a comedy the comedy has a having the two objective one is to educate to reform to modify by evoking laughter by creating a humorous situation but think a while if you are if you want to change the situation if you want to reform the character if you want to modify the society if you want to uh, wipe out the uh, crude elements of the society but by hurting the people by hurting the society is it a kind of a comedy probably not comedy gives us a smile not the tears like as we are going the journey starts there's a new comedy come back after after the plotters and tarens and aristophanes the political satire there's a minander he introduced a romantic fervor a romantic romantic situation in a comedy what is that the boy meets girl this one romcom the first uh, we are uh, we already know this romcom romantic comedy the chiclet <coughs> so minander it is minander who introduced this theme into the into the into the into the play but again this romantic fervor a very much you know very much uh, uh, lesser significant in that place because the satire become become again taken the uh, the maximum pages but when you come back to the shakespearean comedy shakespeare was shakespeare was not you know well, you may say that shakespeare was uh, was poor way shakespeare was influenced by the university poets lily and green shakespeare takes this the romanticism from lily and the idyllic and the romantic background from the green now you can find in why shakespeare why do we read shakespearean comedy when he's famous for the tragedies that this is the this is the most important thing probably now i'm just coming back to this the next uh, next uh, uh, statement in a tragedy of shakespeare uh, you have uh, the previous session you have gone through uh, you have got uh, all the information necessary information so when you read the tragedies you can find that this is an imitation of the human action and which we can internalize we can associate and then they evoking pity and fear and we cry and we we learn certain things but in comedy we cannot find that much that much pity and fear do we probably not then why we do it you know we read the comedy why do we perform comedy is the comedy is a is a, is a kind of, again a, you know no longer is a uh, no longer uh, uh, you know as a great art or probably it's a kind of a um again is a kind of a low art in the hand in the hands of shakespeare what's the what's the originality in shakespeare this much we should understand now there's a two term we should understand one is apollonian another is dionysian what do you mean by apollonian apollonian means the reason and the strict rules and a dionysian means emotion individual freedom journey from city or the court to the forest idyllic life that has been it's a journey from a from a strict rules and the reason and the logic to what to the 
to the imagination, to the fancy. It's a flight of a nightingale from the from the from the world of freight and fever to the world of nightingale. So a Polonian, this is a journey of every comedy of a Shakespeare is a kind of a journey from the reason and the strict rules to the imagination to the freedom. That's what actually the, the Shakespearean comedy comedy is. Now his comedy, you know, Dr. Johnson was a critic of Shakespeare. He says that his tragedy seems to be a skill. His comedy to be an instinct. Now, what are the what are the elements of Shakespearean comedy? First of all, what is most important is in a Shakespearean comedy that the the individual being they are not important. Rather than the setting is much more important. What do you mean by the setting? Now, elements which actually is telling that the you know the I I I did it in the first one the setting. In every Shakespearean comedy, you can find both the heroes and the heroine, they are meeting in the Never Never Land, like the Forest of Arden, in, as you like it, like Illyria, the Twelve Night, or the Desert Island in Tempest. A very imaginary setting, but the characters are in real life. Now, why Shakespeare is giving a kind of a Never Never Land that do not exist in the real time? Now I'm a, you know, don't be, don't be surprised by saying so. Now, when you read Macbeth, I mean, I'm going back to the tragedy. When you go for Macbeth, Macbeth is the setting of Macbeth is a Scotland, not England. That is again, he actually changes, he changes the place. When you go for Hamlet, you can also find that there's a prince of Denmark. And at the same time, he was writing in his mind. He was writing about the about the about the prince of England. So he, he changes the places, in in the tragedy also, but in comedy, he he never changes. Rather, he transforms to a magical land. He create a magical setting. He create a magical land. He named it a newer one, and then placing all those characters from the reality to there. Likewise, you can find in the Tempest, Antonio and all those all those bad people, they are all coming to, to the land of Prospero. And Prospero, with the hands, with the, with the, with the help of Caliban and the Ariel, he created a, a magical land. And then there is a justice is done. But even you can find in the As You Like It, there is a forest of Arden, the Illyria. These places do not exist. This is a kind of a place of imagination. This is a kind of a place of freedom. This is a kind of a place of a kind of a you know kids is nightingale where everything is an utopian concept where everything is good where the songs is in the on the on the branches where the love is in the air when happiness happiness flowing in the with, with the stream that is what the world is created by by Shakespeare in his comedies so if you find the dark crude reality in in tragedy in comedy, you can find a totally different world, a world we seek for, a world which we dream for, a world we wish for, a world which we want very much. This world, you cannot find this, you cannot find that, uh, you know, the blood set, you cannot find a kind of a uh, kind of a border, you cannot find a kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a bad thing. You can find this world, you can find a kind of a solace, a peace, a spirituality. And look this in this world today, we need this world even today. So this Shakespeare, you know, you know, quite you know, long back, he actually uh, dreams for this one, dreams for this setting. And Shakespeare, in all his comedies, he created this land. You know, why he does so? If he wants to, if he wants to criticize the people, what will be what will be the objective of that? So he might be hurting the people, intentionally or unintentionally. So what Shakespeare actually has done? Shakespeare created a never never land, placing the real people, and thereby he was actually giving them chance to rectify themselves. He was not directly criticizing. He was neither criticizing an individual, nor criticizing any situation, nor criticizing any society directly. Rather, he was placing the people 
to the imaginary land and whether and where the characters actually can change themselves the character can can modify themselves character can face to face with their problems he created a fantasy he mixes the magic he mixes with the realism shakespeare mixes fantasy with the reality the fact with the fiction and creates an utopian state where improbable incident take place it's a place for cure it's a place for solace it's a place for spirituality so this place is very much important in shakespearean comedy the setting is very much important and if you go for the edge you like it you can find the, everything the forest of arden the forest of arden you can find this in arcadia you can find this in heaven you can find it's a paradise where every people who are coming from the city who are coming from this uh, from this uh, you know from the court they are all cured the disease has been uh, the disease have been cured at the end of the story shakespeare as i told you neither satirizes the society nor the character like ben jonson did he doesn't laugh at them the character rather he was giving them situation and the situation makes them what makes them expose their follies and the fibers he's never bitter harsh or the crude like contemporary playwright like ben jonson his criticism is polite genial not rejective and cynical shakespeare is a renaissance man shakespeare created this humanism this individualism through his comedies the shakespeare you know in shakespeare world in shakespeare comic world you can find you can find both the world actually is mixed up evil is also there and the good is also there he has also had got a moral overtone that tells him that the evil will be defeated by the good thing everything is there but at the same time shakespeare reconciling those good things with the evil things he actually making a kind of a good world so this humanism is much more important it's not the individual prejudice prejudices is important in shakespearean comedy you can find the humanism is much more important and likewise you can find that the oliver is trying to kill orlando but the same orlando is saving the life of oliver from the from the lion this is called the humanism in a shakespeare come back to the technology techn you know technical thing shakespeare violates the rules and the regulation and the convention of the classical masters and emphasizes on emotions passion imagination and fancy it is in a in a quite shakespeare actually is very much known for violating this uh, classical rule of three unities time place and action and as you like it you can find the there is no uh, time frame the you know it's going on from years to years as 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 we should know that that unity of time has got only 24 24 hours but in as you like it the the incidents are going on going on in a tragic you know in a in a in a unity of action you can find only one action should be there which actually will be responsible for this uh, for that for that uh, uh, incidents main incidents but in as you like it or the 12 night you can find there are several subplots so he actually violates the rigid rules by emphasizing emotion passion and imagination and fancy now another uh, element of uh, you know uh, the shakespearean comedy is the the love affair now the love affair not so very much easy going thing in in romantic comedy of shakespeare young lovers is very much struggling to overcome the obstacle here you can find the love affair between rosaline and orlando in as you like it viola and orsino in twelve night olivia and cesario the love affair in twelve night you can also find this this these are the these are the love stories this, this you know these are the love stories they do have a, a lot many struggle to come back to the you know to to come to the to the conclusion there are different sides of this is a rainbow world of love and idleness in idleness in twelve night sorry in as you like so the reader only to start laughing but also to show the important truths often ignored by the others even this 
fools they tell the most significant philosophy rather than the main characters of the comedy so when you can when you can go for a jack when he says that in as you like it that all the world is a stage we are not we are merely players you can automatically remember or recall or associate this sentence this sentence to the to the famous quote of shakespeare's tragedy that tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing so you can you know this is not something that a tragedy gives you only the philosophical renderings the philosophy the existence of life you can also find this kind of philosophy uh, sorry uh, friends uh, for uh, interruption uh, you can help to you know uh, you can help this technological uh, issues which are uh, there in, in in front of us so what we are telling about that uh, you know it's experian uh, tragedies which were uh, you know accepted as as having a philosophy uh, philosophical uh, outcomes or the philosophical teaching but uh, even in the comedies also you can find that kind of a philosophy or probably you can find the philosophy which has been very much easier way it has been expressed through through such comic situation yeah tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow or to be or not to be in the, in a hamlet these are you know this this philosophy the great philosophy of human life it's been expressed in a in a grim situation but when you when you go for this as you like it the jacks went saying that uh, all the world is a stage and we are merely players the dust bin it's you know it's very much comic situation because uh, they are in the forest of arden and in the forest of arden look this cynicism is not uh, you know is not having a play there not having a you know place there but still shakespeare is is not rejecting the bad qualities of life that is the cynicism uh, uh, so he was creating or he was inviting each and every human emotion into the forest of arden and then he was accepting those things and he giving them he is giving them situation the characters he is giving them situation to cure themselves or to change themselves so thereby there is a question of identity is there look this as you like it everybody was coming with a kind of a uh, a vendetta orlando is coming to you know for he was flying for, for, for from his from the court life because he was scared of his uh, of his brother rosaline is actually is, is gone uh, to the to the forest of arden he was he was searching a uh, of a father and you, you know duke frederick is also coming with an army to kill uh, the senior uh, senior duke and, and uh, orlando these are all coming to from the city life to the to the to the uh, forest they all have something they all have some some quest they all have something a uh, search for Now probably you know you just compare uh, uh, compare to the Ben Johnson Ben Johnson comedy of humors each and every characters they have got a humor and those humor those idiosyncrasies are responsible for their comic situation for their laughter for their buffoonery so because of them they are been criticized or satire in a in a very hard circle here every each and every character of this Shakespeare is also get, also has got the humor but those humor even though they have got the humor but shakespeare is not criticizing them rather he was again and again is giving them a situation he is giving them an opportunity to change themselves to modify themselves to rectify their faults you know what is the difference between shakespearean comedy and the ben jensen's ben jensen actually is a kind of a propagandist Ben Jensen objective is to change the society. Shakespeare was not taking this objective in his mind when he was creating this comedy. Rather, comedy when he was writing comedy, comedy the first important thing in his mind while writing the comedy or, or presenting the comedy is only to create a laughter, create a, a comical situation in front of the in front of the public, so that the people can associate themselves. as they associate themselves in the, the tragedy like the same way they should associate themselves when the comedy actually is playing 
now that's another wonderful uh, the you know uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, quality or the characteristics of a six period comedy is the marriage that is you can find the celebration of marriage in the end of each and every uh, you know the play even in the twelfth night and in the as you like it you can find you know many couples are uh, are married at that end marriage is a symbol of upcoming in the future so he is a futuristic. It is a total union of the purely personal element, sexual attraction, and the romantic love. Whereas tragedy focus on the individual makes death as a central fact of life, comedy insists in the process of love, sex, and the birth as a metaphor of life and the regeneration of life, recreation of life, and the continuity and the procreation. So where tragedy actually ends the life, comedy actually starts the life. So life goes after the place ends. Characters do not die and they share their lives together. So marriage is the most important thing in, 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 every, in every comedy. It's a purposefully Shakespeare actually done this marriage. This given this marriage, the theme of marriage in each and every comedy. Because marriage means what? The procreation. Marriage means a coming of the future generation. A creating a future generation. Whereas tragedy actually ends. So, if you if you if you uh, if you decline comedy in the place of if if you, if you reject comedy by thinking that comedy is a low art, it's not so. All the characters, even in the play, you can find they are the different and the colorful and the imaginary. They really have a peculiar idiosyncrasies. They are not so much grave. They are not so much uh, you know. Uh, they are not so much logical, the re, you know, the reasonable like the like this like the uh, the characters of the tragedy. Different, colorful, imaginary. They are rainbow color. Different facets of love. Take care of this uh, of, of this of this Orlando. Orlando is is writing a love letter, and was putting this into the branches. So that's a kind of a mad kind of love. It's a you know you may this is an ordinary kind of a characters. There is a kind of a, another thing which is very much important in a, in a, in a comedy, separation and reunion. In a tour night, we were separated. Even in the Azul like it, you can find Duke Senior, Duke Frederick. They are separated. Orlando and the Oliver they were separated but at the same time when they come back to the forest of Arden or when they come back to the, the Illyria they were united the Violet Silverstein united Duke Senior and Duke Frederick united and their problems were resolved and Orlando and Oliver resolved all of, they met and they, they become they become happy they forget all about the Red Henry another, another important uh, uh, statement which is which is very much important for for the for to understand a comedy, uh, which is appearance versus reality, mistaken identity, mixed up twins, uh, 